This is a battery alarm device and low voltage bat buzzer alarm and lost model alarm. I'm going to talk about this a little bit because it came as shown and I don't believe there were any instructions with it so I had to do some testing to really understand what was going on with this thing and make sure it really worked like I expected. Um, you know, and so when the alarm goes off, does that mean land immediately? Does that mean the battery's only really half used? I mean, and we basically don't know until we test in this case, right? So, so this guy has uh, some LEDs, and these LEDs light up. Uh, this this uh, is the, the lowest cell in the pack. So this one would be your first cell, which would have the black wire on the balance connector. And you could could connect this into a battery balancing connector, just like this. This is a 3S battery, and so you can see how the uh, if I can get that reflection. Ah, there we go. You can see how the lights light up. So this is the 1S, 2S, and 3S are all. The, the cells are all uh, green, meaning this battery is in good shape, ready to fly. The fourth LED is off because this is a 3S battery. This is a 4S device. So if I were to plug in a 4S balance connector, it would uh, put voltage on that other pin, and we'd have four, probably four green lights. So um, then there's this other connector. Let's cover this real quick. This is for the alarm, and I believe, you know, when they included this connector right here, this little cable. It's basically, to me, it looks like you would plug in this end to a device that would produce an alarm, probably a receiver. And you would set up a channel to trigger when the signal is lost. And then the other two ends, these are all in parallel, you could plug these other two ends um, into whatever you wanted the alarm to go to, and in this case, you could plug it into this three pin device. And you want to make sure the black is on the minus always, black wire is always negative in typical DC power systems. So, so that's how that would work. And if you want to activate the lost alarm, you would push this little button that's here. You probably can't, eh, you can see it. You push that, and then this fifth LED would turn on, and it would be blue saying. They're telling you that um, this will alarm when signal's lost. Normally, um, models don't have that, so this won't even be there. We won't use that. Uh, when the time comes, it, it could come in handy. I did not test it because I don't plan on using it anytime soon. And the weather's getting nice, I want to get out and fly. Okay, so I did some testing on this. Basically, I wanted to see, you know, uh, what voltage does each cell alarm at? You know, what, what, how low does the voltage need to be before an alarm is triggered? And um, does the alarm stay on when the voltage recovers? Like say your battery's getting a little bit low, you go into a climb, use more power, the voltage in the battery is going to sag. At some point this will detect that an alarm on that cell, maybe multiple cells. And does it stop alarming when you go to level flight and cut back power again? It turns out the answer to that is yes, this does not latch, it does reset. And then I was curious also how fast does the alarm happen when low voltage occurs? And it's about half a second or less. I don't have a way to time it in that in that short of a time very easily, so it's at, it's at least less than half a second. So it's pretty fast. And it also resets very fast, also uh, too. The low battery alarm actually is on a cell basis, so any one of these cells can trigger the alarm. It's not overall. Um, so if you use a 3S battery, it's not the overall voltage of 11.1 .1 volts. It's actually each cell. So how does it break down for the values? Just like this. So, so here's the battery, and here's the this alarm device here. And actually, this is upside down. It would actually be like that. So these these five pins here, 
would be these five pins here. Okay, so you would connect the black into the minus, like I said, always black's minus. And then the other colors, they, they may be different than yellow and blue and red and whatever. So you, you just plug in the black to minus and then the others will just plug in. So it turns out the testing revealed that cell number one, which is this lowest, lowest cell, the LED is, is green. If your battery, if that cell is over 3.67 volts, it's green, meaning you know ready to fly. If it's if it becomes just less than that at 3.65, the LED turns red. No alarm yet. When the voltage keeps dropping because you're draining the battery during flying, the LED will go red and start blinking for that cell. So that would be this lower one in this case, and it will activate the alarm. These two. These two piezoelectric sounders will will activate, and those are very loud and actually hurts my ears when I do it two feet away on the bench like this. So I actually put tape over that when I was testing it, and it was still too loud, which is great. <laughs> That's a good thing. And that alarm occurs for this cell at 3.35 volts. Well, the device on the back says 3.3 volts is where it's triggered. Well, that's that's pretty close. The second cell up here. I ran the same testing for the second cell, and it's good to fly over 3.61 volts instead of 3.67, so it's a little bit lower. It goes red at 3.6 instead of 3.65, it's a little bit lower, but it alarms at 3.23, which is quite a bit below 3.3 volts. So these are are 1 point, or 0.1 volts different, which doesn't seem like much, but when you are at the at the tail end of a flight, the voltage drops rapidly in a LiPo when it's going empty, so that, that'll make a little bit of a difference. I'm not really concerned about it at this point, though, but that's not too bad. It's, it's accurate enough um, to meet my expectations.